Welcome back. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Let's bring our final guest there, shall we? He's a singer, he's a songwriter, he's an actor, he's also a movie director. He's directed his first film, which he also wrote. Uh, I think he's one of the most interesting artists around right now. Will you please welcome, it's Ben Drew from Plan B. <laughs> Good to have you, Ben. You're looking great. Thank you. Uh, before we chat about you, what do you think of Gareth's rapping? Do you think he's got what it takes or he's MC, whatever that was exactly? Because um, now you get your chance, now he's in there. Do you know what? It's poetry, so if he doesn't like rapping, he doesn't like poetry. That's a very good point. But, you know, there's a big misconception about, about hip-hop music and, uh, and that's because of um, the way that it's sold in this country. And what's that misconception, then? That it's all about money, hoes and rims. To be fair, a large amount of it is. Well, <laughs> a large amount of the stuff you hear is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but the, un stuff. the underground stuff it isn't. It's very conscious and it's more like poetry. And there seems to be a move now towards slightly more um, uh, kind of a broader base of stuff. I've seen, I've seen a lot of the new stuff is touching on other issues more so well, than it used to even. You know, people are listening to my hip-hop now because of... Uh, it's ironic. Soul music is, is allowing people into the real world of hip-hop, I feel, which I... I captured with my film, Ill Manners, and, and a new record. Um, before I'd done Strip the Max, I don't think it would have been possible for a record like Ill Manners to do what it done, you know, go number one. You know what's interesting is I find about you is you're obviously a very intelligent young man. You're not necessarily a well-schooled young man. I don't know how, well, how far did you get in your education? <laughs> no, no, that wasn't me having a dig. I mean, in terms of like, no, you know, you're you know not university educated, but no. you're very smart, you're very the intelligent. University of life. Yeah, so you're, yeah. Uh, and you're, you're very articulate as well. Um, well, where does that come from, do you think, Ben? Where, uh, where, what is that? Is this from... from are you... you know what? Um, Hip-hop music brought me up, and in order to do it, you have to have a good vocabulary, you know? And uh, I didn't get the grades at school. You know, I got kicked out of school. Um, but I was fortunate to go to the Tunmar Centre in, in uh, Plasto, where i just done the Project Hackney, uh, which was a TV show where... Um, for, for the Hackney Weekender, which is to give you know, local people uh, from the Olympic areas a chance to kind of be involved in the Olympics in some way. We put on a show for them, or Radio 1 put on a show for them. Um, and as part of it, they asked me, Labyrinth and the owner Lewis, to go back to our old schools for like a day or two. And I explained that my old school, you can't do that. It's not the kind of school where you can go and have a photo opportunity. You know, they're kind of disadvantaged kids. And if I'm going to go back there, I have to try and, and make some kind of a difference. You know, the reason why we had the riots is because we have a generation of kids that aren't being parented properly. No one's showing them love, and, and they, they, they think they're... Okay. You're speaking. Clearly, it's cracking a call. They, they feel like they're not worth... They feel like they're not worth anything, and then they walk out the front door and they read the newspaper and the media tells them they're not either. And the media describes them as chavs or it's... Yeah, and society reads the newspaper and then they, they believe it. And then when a kid, when they come into contact with a kid like this, they have a preconception of them and then they treat them accordingly. And, you know, we, we have issues... You know, we have issues in this country, everyone sees them. And the, the biggest issue, I feel, was, was the riots. And when the riots happen, I, I just... I could see the problem. And I feel like it's an issue that's been here longer than 30 years and, you know, the government have never done anything to change it. What do you think? Do you, have you spoken to any politicians? Because they often they reach I have. out. Do you know what? I have spoken to politicians. I've spoken to some very young and charming, nice politicians. Actually, one of them was quite fit. <laughs> and, um, they... I like Nick Clegg too. I think he's. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> oh, I see you weren't. I see. I thought he was. No, um. <laughs> Their hearts, you know, like at this age, I think if you get into politics, you, you, you kind of like, you get in to it for the right reasons. You, yeah. you kind of want to change things. And I think that once you climb up the ladder and you, you get into that seat of power, um, I, I think you get compromised straight away. They have away. to compromise just to get there, it seems, and so therefore yes, they've, already, yes. uh, they've already lost that, maybe that initial reforming yeah. urge or... Yeah, know. which is it's, it's difficult for me to, to, um, to kind of... I'm trying to think of the right word. I would say get down with a politician. <laughs> <laughs> um, since you've become well known, uh, who have you met? Who, who have you encountered? Which heroes have you met? Have you met people who were influences uh, to you when you grew up? Yes, have you enjoyed that? I time? met the Prodigy. I met Liam Gallagher. I met um, 
Ray Winston, obviously Michael Caine, who I work with. Um, who did you meet at the Nordoff Robbins? Oh, okay. Who did you meet there? This is a. a okay, this, is, so, this intrigues me. This story. So I, I won three Ivan Novellos. Was it last year or the year before? Year before, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's quite emotional for me because, like, Ivan Novellos is about what the people within the industry think about you. It's not. It's not to do with selling records, or you know, it's not televised. So it's it's about you know, the, the writing of the song and the artistry of it. And it was very emotional for me. And I, I'd done quite an emotional speech. And, um, and Rolf Harris come up to me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> now, was Rolf Harris familiar with your work? Is he a yeah. Plan B fan? He yeah, knew about I think, Plan B. I think so. He knew about it. Okay. Well, I mean, he knew about me after that, and he, but he was, he was crying. And he just said that my, my um, you know, that my uh, speech had... had brought a tear to his eye and, and inspired him to want to write music again. Oh, hold on. And now, I'm, is that...? <laughs> no, no, I'm not lying to you. I'm not lying to you, because I was like, it was so surreal, because I, I was like... I said to him as well, I said, I feel like you're my granddad, because... <laughs> he's looked the same throughout my whole life. He hasn't aged. He's always so, had white hair. <laughs> Did yeah. you used to watch Cartoon Time? Yeah, I used to love drawing. I used, before I'd done any of this stuff, I, was, I got really good at drawing. Okay. And then I found music and alcohol and girls, and then that's... Yeah. Now I'm crap. <laughs> yeah, but, like, it, draw, it was drawing. And, uh, you know, Rolf Harris, like, he... I have. I grew up with him, and he, has, he didn't know who I was until then, but I knew exactly who he was. And it was so weird the first time I meet him that he's crying, and, and telling me how much I've inspired him. And then we, we had a picture, and then he had a go at me because I wasn't smiling properly. <laughs> <laughs> like a proper granddad, do you well, know what I mean? That's, that's old yeah. school showbiz. He's you like, got come on, smile. smile properly, you've got to show your teeth. You know? It was just, you know, overwhelming, really overwhelming, strange experience. You know, I uh, really enjoy your work, but certainly meeting you, you're such a lovely man. Thank so you thanks very for coming much. on. Ben Drew, ladies Ben, um, you made many people think of uh, him as a rapper, but of course, I guess you, it was your singing that really put you on the map, wasn't it? You, you sing as well, and you're going to... The track you're this evening has both in it, doesn't it? It has singing and rapping. It has singing and rapping, yes. well, You better go it's and get yourself story. ready to go. Let's go and get okay. over there. Ben Drew, ladies and gentlemen, is going to perform that with Plan B right over there. Thank you. Thanks to all my guests tonight. Next week on the show, I'll be joined by Andrew Lloyd Webber, and from his new production, we've got Mel C and Tim Minchin performing with Jesus, not the actual Jesus, the Jesus who's in the thingamajig. Uh, phone Jack himself, Kevin Nova will be here, and Cheryl Cole will be here chatting and performing as well. But now to play us out with his new single, Deepest Shame, and it's a, it's a really very, very wonderful track indeed. It's the fantastic Plan B. <laughs>
Mo Farah pits his wits against the Cube tomorrow at 8 here on ITV1. Next Saturday on The Jonathan Ross Show, Andrew Lloyd Webber, the cast of Jesus Christ Superstar and the one and only Cheryl Cole are all stopping by. Next tonight, though, Kira Knightley stars in Pride and Prejudice. After the news.